process of hemostasis consists of three steps vasospasm, platelet plug formation, and clot formation. In this video, we are going to discuss platelet plug formation. Normally, platelets in circulation are disc shaped in resting condition. So, this is a resting platelet. These platelets can change their shape and release the contents of the granule when stimulated. The stimulation of this platelet occurs by various mechanisms and the change in shape of the platelets and release of its granules is known as platelet activation. So activating the platelet uh, spreads out and uh, there are so many pseudopods. This is an activated platelet. Apart from these two changes, many other events happen in this process. The stimulus for platelet activation is present at the site of vessel injury. So before going into details, we will just see in short what happens at site of vessel. So at site of vessel injury, what happens? These endothelial cells are injured and there is exposure of subendothelial collagen. At this site, this von Willebrand factor binds to this subendothelial collagen. Now, circulation is going on. Platelets are present in circulation. Because of this vessel injury, what happens is that there is a change in shear force of flow and these platelets come here and bind with this von Willebrand factor. Now on the surface of the platelets, there is a protein known as GP1B which has affinity for this von Willebrand factor. Now this process, binding of GP1B platelet receptor with one Willebrand factor is known as platelet addition. So in platelet addition, basically platelets are binding to the subendothelium by means of GP1B and one Willebrand factor. Now because of this binding only, there is change in shape of the platelets. So they become like this and there is also release of the granules. So the contents of the alpha and dense granules are released to the blood. Now these contents itself, the contents of the granules that is ADP, um, thromboxane A2, these act on the platelets themselves. So these platelets have receptors for ADP, thromboxane A2. Now because of this, there is change in affinity of another protein present on the surface of platelet that is GP2B3A. Once that affinity increases, it binds to fibrinogen. So these platelets start binding to fibrinogen. There is cross-linking between the platelets. So there is this fibrinogen which is bound to GP2B3A receptor of one platelet and also with the other. Then this further binds with fibrinogen of other platelets. So basically you saw that von Willebrand factor and GP1B is mediating the binding between platelets and subendothelium while GP2B3A receptor is mediating the binding between platelets and other platelets. So this process of platelets binding with other platelets is known as platelet aggregation. So this one is platelet aggregation. So once we understand this process, we can also know that what will happen in certain diseases like a decrease in von Willebrand factor occurs in an inherited disease which is autosomal dominant. Now there is another disease, it's a rare disease though, that in which there is abnormal GP1B receptor. 
So that is known as Bernard Solier syndrome. Again, platelet radiation cannot occur in this. So in this kind of disease, number of platelets is normal. There is problem in formation of platelet plug. Similarly, there is a disease in which there is abnormal GP2B3A. So that is known as Glanzmann's thrombesthemia. So platelet aggregation problem will be there in this disease. So all these will lead to bleeding disorders because there is abnormal platelet plug formation. Obviously if number of platelets is less that occurs in uh, infections like dengue, there is the idiopathic thrombocytopenic purpura, then also there will be problem in platelet plug formation. Now there may be certain diseases in which excessive platelet plugs are formed. In that case by knowing these mechanisms we can inhibit this process and uh, for that there are ADP receptor antagonists present. So one example of such drug is clopidogrel. Now similarly formation of thromboxin A2 is blocked by aspirin. Now there is another drug which is used which blocks these receptors GP2B3A receptors and uh, these are its antagonists. So one example is apsiximab. So it interferes with platelet aggression. But obviously when you are giving these drugs you have to monitor their dose because otherwise uh, they will uh, cause bleeding. They will block the required necessary platelet plug formation also. But how this uh, platelet plug formation is kept in check normally? Because this process is a positive feedback process. You see that uh, once addition occurs, it releases these ADP thromboxane A2 and there is platelet aggregation. In turn, these also activate further platelets. It is important that this process is kept in check at the site of vascular injury. Otherwise, a massive platelet plug will form and keep on enlarging. Now, this is done by release of certain chemicals from intact endothelial cells like uh, prostaglandin I2, nitric oxide, which uh, prevent platelet plug formation. Then there is uh, ADPase. ADPase cleaves extra released ADP, which is coming to the other normal side. Also, they have a layer of glycocalyx which provides them negative charge and normal endothelial surface also has a negative charge so they repel each other. Plus this GP1B normally does not bind with this one bilivron factor. This, this is also circulating right but it is not able to bind with it. It is only with change in shear force at the site of the injury that the affinity there is change in affinity of GP1B towards von Willebrand factor. Then only at the site of injury does this binding take place. Now since initial addition of platelets depends on shear force which is more in arteries and arterioles, platelets have a major role in hemostasis in arteries and arterioles. Plus they are so sufficient to plug capillary injuries which occur daily. So that is, uh, these capillary injuries occur on a daily basis even without you knowing. Suppose if I clap like this, this sum of my blood vessels, small capillaries have broken. These are all plugged by platelets. Now that is the reason why to prevent or treat arterial thrombosis. Like in coronary arteries and cerebral arteries, antiplatelets are used. And what are antiplatelets? This, clopidogrel, uh, GP2B3 antagonist aspirin while where sluggish flow is there that is in veins if any uh, thrombosis occurs like in deep vein thrombosis anticoagulants are used because fibrin clot formation is more important in veins 